Well, good morning. Um, hi, my name is Chris Snydig. Um, I'm one of the nurses, uh, nursing students here with um, USI. Um, we are uh, junior nursing students that have been on the unit 4546 here with you guys all semester. I haven't seen you guys in a little bit though, but um, this semester basically what we've been doing is looking at a project, an evidence-based uh, practice project, and trying to figure out uh, what could affect this unit or what could even affect the hospital as a whole. Um, and so I just have one thing, one thing I want you guys to think about for a second. I just want to think about the idea of stars, okay? So we'll get back to that in a second. I'm glad you're thinking about it. We'll get back to it later. Um, so as we're going on here, um, so we've taken the time to, uh, this semester and researched different ideas. And our idea that we um, have really kind of run with was the this idea of disposable blood pressure cuffs. Um, so can you see on here we have our question that we asked. We said, does the use of disposable blood pressure uh, cuffs as opposed to non-disposable blood pressure cuffs um, do they decrease infection rates? Um, so are that's for inpatient adults, and does it increase infection rates during their hospital stay? So we went through uh, several different research topics um, and tried running with this in different areas. Um, but now that we go back to the idea of stars, um, I'm going to let Megan kind of explain to you guys what that means. Okay. Okay. So basically, stars is the little acronym that we came up with to help you all kind of remember the benefits of the disposable versus the non-disposable. As you can see up here, we have the S, the first S to save money, the T is transmission, the A is accuracy, the R is reservoir, and the S is super cheap, and these fellow people are going to elaborate on that a little bit more. Hi, my name is Rachel, and I'm going to be talking about the first S, and the first S is saves money. Um, before I get into the money, I'm going to go off of healthcare acquired infections. Um, an estimated 100,000 uh, 100, deaths per year occur because of healthcare acquired infections. And healthcare acquired infections are also the fifth leading cause of deaths in the hospital setting. Um, so these hospital acquired infections are um, predominant um, and they're also very costly. An estimated $50 million are spent on healthcare acquired infections per year in the Midwest alone. Um, now, with that being said, as of October 1st, 2008, Medicare and Medicaid stopped reimbursing the hospitals um, for the money that was needed to pay the um, health care required infections, meaning that the hospitals would now have to pay the difference. And that money could be spent elsewhere. That could be spent for patient satisfaction, not spent on health care required infections. Um, so health care required infections are caused um, via microbe transmission. So I'm going to tag team it off to Megan to right. talk about transmission. I'm Megan and I have T for transmission. So um, transmission occurs due to body fluids, blood and secretions and having the blood pressure cuffs on the patient's arm for a long period of time. Um, the Dynamaps also um, allow the spread of multiple bacteria from patient to patient. Uh, majority of the colonization occurs on the inside of the blood pressure cuff yet it was also found on the outside. Uh, one of our research showed that uh, three, pati three patients in the ICU were directly linked to acquiring infections from the blood pressure cuffs. So um, blood pressure cuffs are a big deal in transmission of infections. So now I'll pass it on. <coughs> All right, hi, I'm Sam. Uh, I did the accuracy. So one of the advantages with disposable blood pressure cuffs is when the patient comes in, they will be fitted accurately for their own blood pressure cuff instead of what you see around here a lot of just the standard size just sitting in the room. And with the um, fitted cuffs, or disposable cuffs being fitted, it will lower the misdiagnosis of hypertension and hypotension, and also save nurses time for when they walk in a room and the standard doesn't fit, they have to run around the units looking for the accurate one. So I'll hand it off to Rebecca. I'm Becca, and I did the R and STARS, which is reservoirs. The University of Sydney in Sydney, Australia wanted to test to see if blood pressure cuffs could act as vectors for bacteria, and they tested three different units in the hospital, the emergency department, the high dependency unit, and the operating theater. They swabbed both the inside and the outside of the cuffs and then cultured them for bacteria colonies, and they found that there was a 76 to 100% colonization rate on these blood pressure cuffs, and they swabbed them after they had already been disinfected and they use ammonium chloride as their disinfectant, which I know at Deaconess we use bleach a lot. Um, we use bleach a lot um, for our disinfectant, and according to the American Chemistry Society, ammonium chloride is actually a stronger disinfectant than bleach. 
So if they were finding those high of bacterial colonization rates on their blood pressure cuffs, ours might be even worse than that. And so Joe is going to talk to you about the final S, which is super cheap. All right. Uh, as Rachel said, in 2008, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services eliminated healthcare-acquired infections from their reimbursement schedules, uh, as did private insurance companies. So the average cost, or the total cost of healthcare-acquired infections in the United States, is 35 to 45 billion per year. <laughs> which leads to uh, roughly 20 to 25,000 per patient to treat a healthcare acquired infection. Um, <coughs> so the average cost of a disposable blood pressure cuff, Welch Allen, available from medsupplier.net, is $6.56, which is 0.03% of the cost to treat one patient for a healthcare acquired infection. Um, so you could buy roughly 3,000 disposable blood pressure cuffs with the money that you spent treating one healthcare acquired infection. Um, and then it would be up, up to hospital administration to decide if this was a chargeable item or if this is a courtesy item that could be used for marketing or anything like that. Um, you could show patients that this is something that you're doing to, to better their experience. The big question will come down to, does it work? And the answer is yes. These cuffs work in a sense that they are accurate in measuring blood pressure readings. Um, several studies have been done that show that these disposable cuffs are as accurate as, if not more accurate, than the reusable disposable blood pressure cuffs. So they're not just a cheap piece of plastic. And in fact, we have one on the board over there that if you guys want to see it, we can pass it around later. It's from Reagan's work. So you can see that they're sturdy, they're durable. And secondly, they do work in the sense that they are capable of decreasing infection rates. There was a study done um, in a NICU, and over the course of 21 weeks, about five months, there were 250 babies that were inpatients in this NICU. And of those 250, 46 came down with healthcare acquired infections, these nosocomial infections. And this was after the 48 hour mark of birth, so this was no longer associated with the mother and the birth process. This was from the NICU itself. And so this NICU brought in a research team because this infection rate was nearly 20% of their inpatients. And the researchers tried several different interventions. They tried putting in more sinks that, at the unit to try to promote uh, hand hygiene. They educated their staff, their nurses, um, on hand hygiene and, and the transmission of these organisms. And then they tried to decrease the amount of traffic that was in and out of the NICU, seeing if maybe it was parents or visitors that were bringing in these infections. And nothing showed them the results that they wanted. Um, these transmission rates were not decreasing any. And finally, around the 16th week, so after about four months, somebody realized that they were using the same blood pressure cuff and the same like Dynamap to measure the blood pressures on all the babies that were inpatients at any given time. So when they saw this, they took the cuff and they cultured it. And what they found was the exact strands of Klebsiella, the exact strands of E. cloquet and Staphylococcus that had actually taken the lives of eight of these babies. Um, these, out of the 46 that got infections, eight of them did die, and they were finding these exact strands on this blood pressure cuff. So they immediately did away with that, got disposable cuffs, so each infant was given their own blood pressure cuff, and they saw the eradication of that Klebsiella, the E. cloquet, and their infection rates overall decreased. So these cuffs can not only save money from the reimbursement from these healthcare acquired infections, but they're also going to save a lot of heartache. And I know healthcare is a business and this is our jobs, but we also have to always remember that these are people's lives that we're dealing with, so it can save money, but also a lot of heartache. Um, so to answer the question, yes, they do work. And hospitals across the country are beginning to implement them and they're seeing decreases in um, their overall infection rates. Hi. I'm Laura. Um, and so as you can see, we've, we've worked really hard on this project, and it's something that I know means a lot to us, and I'm sure it means a lot to you guys as well. And to us, you know, a blood pressure cuff seems to be something small that could make a big difference, and something cheap, as we see, that can make a big difference. And so I just, you know, I want to get that across to you guys, how hard we've worked, and, you know, that this really does, this can change what we're doing. And... Um, I want to thank everyone for being here and for being so receptive to us. You guys have been great. We really appreciate it as students for you all to come out and support us like this. It really means a lot to us. 
Um, we want to thank the hospital and especially this unit for opening up its knowledge for us to be able to learn. I think I speak for all of us whenever I say that we've definitely gained a lot of experience here. And we are super excited to further our education and possibly, you know, end up working here in this hospital and doing good things and changing healthcare. So that's something that's really important to us. Um, if you have any other questions, just let us know. If you have questions about STARS, we'll try to answer it. Um, we also have references at the bottom of our board if you are interested on going a little deeper into this project, possibly into implementation. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope you've really enjoyed our presentation and enjoyed our cupcakes because they're adorable and <laughs> as Sharona says, they're really good and moist. So thank you all so much. <laughs> so impressed with the evidence-based practice and focus on research that all of you are getting uh, in, a, in your bachelor's program. So very, very impressive. Uh, I am interested in some of the other level of detail, but I won't take up everyone's time to um, follow up on that. You know, appreciating that the percent of hospital-acquired infections, when we talk about that, we're talking about a variety of different hospital-acquired infections and to gain some appreciation of the factors in the environment, in the patient care room, that is impacting that. Uh, it has become a very top priority. Um, and not just because of payment, uh, really for the safety and well-being of our patients. So I think there's a number of elements in that patient care environment that we do need to look at very differently than we have in the decades gone by. And, and sort of a lot of this insight will absolutely benefit us. And we continue to be hiring new nurses. <laughs> 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 I could comment. <laughs> well, you know. It's individuals like you that will help us continue to drive um, the, the important priority around evidence-based practice and the new realm that nursing has to be very integrated into around research. Because it is about the data. It's about those findings that are significant that say this is an important change for us to make that will always be convincing to administrators. It's always the way we build the business case. Uh, so very, very well done. And the business case expert to my right. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the numbers master. in my head. <laughs> As the operations lead. Yeah. <laughs> and we looked at it a few years ago, and I'll just give you an, an example. And, and you do look at all the math of it, but $6 a blood pressure cuff, which I'm sure we could get a better price than that. Probably. But even at that, if it's $6 times 12,000 surgery patients a year, or if you count the surgery centers, you know, you're, you're doubling that number, you're up to, you know, eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollars $100,000. So you really have to weigh that, you know, how many infections could that prevent? And I was at a physician meeting um, this week, and they actually brought up disposable blood pressure cuffs. And I said, well, funny you should bring that up. I'm coming to a presentation. And they all said, well, if I come in, I, I think I'd like a disposable blood pressure cuff. So, you know, you understand that, and it doesn't take long to do that math. Right. One or two more hospital-acquired infections, uh, you could certainly make a case for it. So this has been a nice uh, start for that. So I appreciate your work.